four years, Governor Brown has chosen to prioritize tearing down the wall of debt over investing in families, the economy, and the social safety net. Well, now it's our turn. We need the governor to take the hammer that he used to tear down the wall of debt and tear down the wall of poverty, standing in the way of millions of Californians' ability to thrive. Mm -hmm. 2008, California has been cutting and gutting vital programs for our children, families, seniors, and people with disabilities. These cuts amount well over $15 billion, resulting in massive holes in our social safety net. And almost a quarter of California's children are living in poverty. What a shame, California. What a shame. What a shame. This year, we've got $3.6 billion more than we have expected the state revenues, which is enough money to make giant, a giant dent in tearing down the wall of poverty. That's right. All we need is a governor to show courage to do so. Yes. Well, um, actually, good afternoon. My name is Margaret uh, Wilson. I am a disabled parent, and I'm right now actually expecting baby number five. Um, it is important to me that child care exists because all my children have experienced the preschool, child care, daycare, and it, had, it helped me graduate high school as a teen parent. I was able to do that. To see my daughter now in high school, to see my other children in middle school, and I have a currently disabled kindergarten. And for this little one that's on its way, I hope to have a safe future for my for my new child. I want them to be able to succeed. California is supposed to be uh, the land opportunity, change, and all this positive prospects and everything. Well, I would like to see the governor show us that. Because obviously, some of us cannot just do it all on our own. We're supposed to be working together as a group and as a team. There are 10,000 children that are, you know, without child care. That means their parents can't go to work and or school to go get an actually good job. Some of us are fortunate to stay home, but what about the family members that cannot stay home? That need to have two, three jobs just to pay rent. Right. In San Francisco, uh, yeah. speaking of, and uh, it, if you don't have Section 8 or housing, that means you will be on the street. That means your children will be put where? That means they will have to hide in, in, in a box somewhere just to find out if they can learn their ABCs. That's what the early education starts with is child care. So if you guys want to help us, we need to put it out there. We need child care. Please, child care, number one, is your child. If you have children, put them number one. Right. Let's introduce Marisol Ferrante. She's a member of the Independent Living Resource Center of San Francisco and is going to talk about the SSI program. Marisol, tear down the wall of poverty. Marisol, I've been on SSI for about 11 months. I worked in the San Francisco Unified School District for 19 years before becoming disabled in August of 2011. I received disability pay for a year, and then when that stopped, I had to live off of my savings. And when that was exhausted, I had to live off of my retirement funds. So when all of those funds were gone, I started receiving SSI. I didn't qualify for SSDI because the San Francisco Unified School District didn't have us paid to Social Security until August of 2011, which is when I became disabled. So it was too late for me. Since I've been on SSI, my quality of life has gone down considerably. I'm so far below the poverty level that I only eat once a day most days. And some days I don't eat at all. It's been six months since I was able to pay my full amount of rent, which is $700 a month. I run out of money by the third week of the month, and I have to choose which bills won't get paid. And so I've been using credit cards, but now those are maxed out as well. And so I've become so depressed that um, at times I've had suicidal thoughts. It's hard enough to deal with being disabled, but then to have to deal with extreme poverty is unbearable. No one should have to live like this urge your elected officials to increase the monthly amount of SSI funds so that we at least have enough to live on. Thank you. Here, here. Here, here. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Beatrice, and I am undocumented and uninsured. Woo! My experiences without health care started when I was nine years old and dislocated my elbow. 
instead of being taken to a doctor or to a hospital, my father took hands, took matters into his own hands and popped my elbow back in. That same year, my mother fell very ill and was eventually brought to the hospital where she fell into a coma for two months. She was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and because my family could not afford health care, she was not able to know this information before it got worse. Miraculously, she woke up from her coma, but since then, my mother and my family continue to not get health care on a regular basis. My mother passed away in 2012. It did not have to come to that. I remember crying and telling my mother before she passed away, we can't keep going to the hospital. It's too expensive. I can't afford to pay these bills. How many of our loved ones have to suffer or even die before they can finally have health care for all people? When I got sick, I was scared to go to the hospital because I couldn't afford it. Instead, I was referred to clinics that provide health services to those regardless of your status. When I went to the clinic, I told them my situation and I was rejected because of my status. We need health care that's affordable for everyone. We need health care that accepts everyone. We need funding to keep Medi-Cal accessible to deferred action recipients. That includes undocumented youth, parents who are eligible under President Obama's new administrative action. But above all, we need help for all SB4 to be a priority in 2014. 2015, sorry. Our health is California's health. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bilal Lee. I'm with the Coalition on Homelessness, and I'm here to talk about the Rest to Right campaign, which is part of the Homeless Bill of Rights campaign that we're waging here in California, Oregon, and Colorado. As we all know, 2004 marked the year more and more laws were made to target poor and homeless people. Laws against slip, slip, sitting, lying, sleeping, and sharing food in public places. And this continues to happen. I just passed about 12 dozen, uh, a dozen cops right here on market harassing people who have no other place to go but the ground. But the Right to Rest campaign is a challenge to these racist and classic laws that criminalize homelessness by making it a crime to conduct life-sustaining activities in public spaces. Arresting and citing people for sitting, lying, sleeping in public spaces is cruel and unusual punishment that is meted out on our community's most vulnerable members who already live on the precipice of existence. Such draconian measures go against core American values of compassion, fairness, and justice. When homeless people are cited and then have, uh, lack the funds to pay for fines, they are placed in jail. This is wrong. This is wrong. And this only adds on to their poverty, and it only exacerbates the problem. It does it. It's not a uh, time-proven solution. It exacerbates the problem of poverty. You're arrested. You're put in jail. You lose your housing. You lose other services and resources that only, again, exacerbates your poverty. A fair budget and a just budget with guaranteed opportunities for those affected by gross social and economic inequalities and offer time-proven solutions that alleviate the suffering of so many that are living in poverty and homelessness. A fair and just budget should reflect the needs of the state's most vulnerable populations. It should ensure that homeless Californians and those living in poverty have a right to rest without fear of harassment, That's right. or arrest. Attempt, attempts to criminalize resting, sitting, lying down, and sleeping are more wasteful and actually make it more difficult for homeless people to exist on the sheets, streets. Over 125 statewide organizations working for social and economic justice have endorsed the Right to Rest campaign as part of the Homeless Bill of Rights campaign. And we're not alone in this effort, as I said. It's going on here in California, Colorado, and Oregon. We need a budget with budget solutions that do more good than harm. We will be gathering on Saturday, January 18th, at the Powell Street uh, cable car turnaround. We will have a sleep in from 1, 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning as part of the national actions commemorating uh, Martin Luther King. 
as well, Martin Luther King would be right here with us today if he was alive. Yeah. He would be right here standing here with us today. That's so right. So we want to commemorate what he was about, and we'd also be joining the Black Lives Matter uh, on that activity. In Thank closing, you. I just want to say, although we want to end the criminalization of resting, we want to end that. Do you want that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We want to end. Uh, we want to end that, and we're for that. But at the same time, we are not going to rest. We're not going to rest until we expose and we eliminate uh, human and civil rights violations against those experiencing poverty and homelessness. Again, we will not rest. Can I just, we will not rest? We, we will, will not, not rest. rest. We will not rest. We will not rest. Let them hear you in there. We will not rest. We will not rest. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Barbara Coleman, and I am a retired, formerly homeless nurse in San Francisco. I came here to better my condition and found out that I have to walk the system to do that. But being formerly homeless, I sympathize. I have been, uh, had a place to stay for about seven years now. And that's because I was persistent in trying to work the system, which I am a senior, and I should not have to do that. You're here. Having been a resident of San Francisco, California, which is one of the richest states in the country, yeah, right. I came from a poor town in Louisiana to better my condition for me and my family and friends to come do the same thing. But found out, no, I can't send for you because I'm doing bad myself. Okay, so St. Anthony Foundation, I got involved with their program and started working their program, volunteering and, and going through the system with what they proceed to have. That's how, that's who helped me. Food every day. I ate in St. Anthony Kitchen, still eat there today. Even though I live right around the corner in housing, one of their Housing. Okay? So, I sympathize with people with children. But today, I'm also here to talk about SSI, which they are about to leave and cut away. Seniors are one of the most vulnerable people in California. That's right. They forgot about us. Okay? And today, I am so glad to be a part of Walk on Property. Okay, because we need that. Um, my name is Raleigh Nixon, and I'm uh, I'm working with CHOP. And for the last four years, I've been working on just an issue. Today, we're here to pass a permanent source of revenue to free, rebuild land and shelter our voice. Speak into the mic, honey. For people lower incomes, we're here to get rid of the ban on people with drug felonies for public housing in Section A, and a place to stay too. We're here to protect as the second home often used for air bombs. We need that now. Sacramento, clean up your mess. And as you know, our kids are not safe in school anymore. Anybody can walk in there with a loaded weapon or a magazine and take them out. Sacramento, clean up your act. We need housing, we need jobs, we need all these things for these people. At Sacramento, you have the funds, you have the means. So we're sick of being put on hold. So Sacramento, clean up your act. Thank you. All right. This state has a historical uh, practice of criminalizing poverty. If you look at, uh, we can go back in history and look at in 1980s when there was only 13 prisons and a population was like at about 20 some thousand prisoners. And go move forward, we built 20 some extra prisons now. We got like 30 something prisons throughout California. Uh, Brown, you stepped up and said you was going to do something about those large prisons. You said you was going to do something to curb it and take it down. You did do something. You did AB 109, which put a whole lot of people back on the street without jobs, without employment, without any benefits. Shame, shame. Then you came back around and you did this latest thing that you did, and you put even more people back in the streets without jobs. And just, I have to ask myself, and I think our citizens should be asking ourselves. That's right. When we look at the pipeline from school to prison, because that's what it seems like you're doing. You're building these prisons as if there's some baseball field. You build it, they'll come. Yeah. And after we come out these prisons, 
without any resources, any aid, all we have is the streets. And then you criminalize us for sleeping and laying on these same streets. Without any excuse. I hope you take this three point something billion dollars you have and put it in some, into some real resources. We in California, one of the richest states in the union, should not have a homeless problem. We shouldn't have people talking about poverty and social security uh, being denied. We shouldn't have that in California. We're asking you to quit criminalizing poverty. Stop bailing out the big guys and think about the regular people here.